Hi everyone, so we're going to learn the basics of real-time communications using SignalR in .NET. So you can get started with this technology. Without further to say, let's begin. Okay, here I already have my .NET project. If you have a web application in .NET, you should be able to implement SignalR on top of it by following my steps. First, let's define a use case. I want to create a chat box, a public chat box. Anyone can enter there and just talk with random usernames, fully anonymous. It's pretty simple and we're going to follow that so we can understand how events work and how we can make applications with this. First, we need to define a hub. The hub is the implementation that you create for your own events for real-time communications using SignalR. Let me show, show it to you so you can understand what's happening there. So first, I'm going to create a hub folder and there, I'm going to add my chat box hub CS. Public class chat box hub that extends from hub. As you can see, now I have the dependency of SignalR. And I want to receive a specific value for the messages. It's going to be really simple. I will have a client that sends a message and I then SignalR manages to distribute that message to all the other clients connected to the server. So let's define the structure of this message. And I only need two things, the username and the message. You can use any type of body that you want to, to distribute or even distribute to a specific client if you want. For this example, I'm going to distribute to everyone a simple class, a simple purple class with only two properties. So I'm going to create a class right here called message data. And it's going to include the username, well, the message, of course, and the username. I'm going to say that it cannot be null. And yeah, the other one, it's not, also cannot be null. Now I already have my message data. And this is the class that I'm going to receive and transfer between my clients. So now let's define the events, what is going to happen on the client, what, what we're going to invoke from the client and what we're going to do, the logic inside it. It's the same, it's really similar of how controllers work right now on, on .NET. So you can like keep that logic. So I create a void method that I'm going to call message. It should be a method name, but I, I want the, the event to be called message. I'm going to have it for receive and send. So I'm going to receive a message data component, a uh, message data uh, item, and then I'm going to send asynchronously the message to every single client. I just take the clients, all, send the sync, the event name that's what's going to be represented as an event on the client, and the data that I want to send in that event. With this, I should be completely done with my with the implementation of SignalR, well, of my events of SignalR in my project. We're going to look uh, to this further to, so, so we can understand it better later. But now let's set up our project so we can use this hub. For that, we need to go to the program CS of our project. You will have your builder and you need to add the service of SignalR. So for that, we go builder, services, add SignalR. Once you have that, you already have the service of SignalR and you can start adding hubs and we can add our hub, app map hub, and we send the generic and then we can put a little route that will represent the access to our WebSocket. And this will help you if you have different contexts of different hubs uh, with a specific logic inside of them. Maybe, uh, I don't know, but multiple, if you have, one application that have multiple socket implementations, you can define the context of your, of your different hubs by just creating the, the little route here. I'm going to leave the route chat box. I already have this and my service should work the same way, should work how, how, it, how it's expected, but I need to set up some stuff so I can use it for my client. I'm, I'm going to use the JavaScript client and it's web. So I need to define the course, the cross site, blah, blah, blah thing. So for that, it's the same way that you will do it with a web application. We just do a builder 
services, add course. We define our, our default policy, add default policy, policy. And now we define our, the rules of our course. Something that you need to know is that you cannot allow every single origin, like maybe there's a way, a workaround for it, but because it uses, uh, SignalR uses credentials for authentication with the server, uh, credentials and allowable old origins are not compatible. You cannot have those two headers inside. So it's an issue. You need to define your different origins if you have more than one. Uh, for that, you just do policy with origins. You define the origin that's going to call your application uh, the, the, uh, where uh, your client is hosted. Uh, you can add uh, an array of strings with all your, your origins, or if you only have one like me, you only add the URL of your, of your origin. Then allow any error, allow any method, allow credentials, and that should be that should be enough. You can check more of the uh, compatible or the more factible ways of defining your course policy for depending on your, on your use case. For this, I already have my web application. I'm going to check which port it's using. I think it's not running. I have a really simple chat application here. Let me start a, li a little live server here and I have my chat box here, which is not working because of course, and I'm going to use this as my origin here. So I just take the URL and put it here. Now I have defined my origins and what it, the origin that it's allowed to request to my server. Now that I have that, I have to define the use course. Remember, you, uh, you need to define the, the use course before you define your hub. It's, it's that way. That's how it, how it works because of the, the way that it's, uh, the, the application is uh, being executed. So define your use course and then you can add your map hub. Once you have this, you should be, you should be done. That, that, that should be enough to uh, run our application. So let's do a .NET run. So here I have the, my application, my web application, it's running on the, on the port 5265. Uh, I already have done the implementation in JavaScript, but we're going to read it from the top so we can understand what's happening on the client, okay? Here I have my web application. Sorry, it's ugly, it's a quick thing. I, 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 I'm not, I'm more into the, onto, onto the .NET part, that's why I wanted to show you. So this is a full demo. So, okay. And here I have my chat manager and I have it, I, I connect the server implementation. So what, what happens here is I create my connection that we use the library of SignalR. You can use any official library that you want for your client, any client that most of the, of the languages and different clients that you might, that, that you might use where you're developing may have a SignalR extension script plugin that you can use on it. In this case, I'm using the, the SignalR CDN for JavaScript here as the, the version six. It's uh, coming from, from Cloudflare. You can, you can find that on the, on the Microsoft documentation if you want to use a CDN or if you want to download the JS file and use it. And even the NPM package that it's completely available if you want to use a web implementation. But okay, here I define new SignalR hub connection builder. Then I set the URL that's going to use, as you can see, the port, I think it's right. Five, two, six, five, but the context is not. So I have to define chat box here that comes from my map hub. If I go here, map hub, chat box, okay? So now that I have that, you can define how you want to log, what you want to log. In this case, you just want to log everything that is referred as information on the server. And I have my start method. This, uh, you don't need it exactly this way, but it's a cool way to manage reconnections. Like whenever you get you get an issue, like okay, the server is not available, just reconnect until it's available. Okay, so we try to start the connection. If it works, then SignalR is connected. Uh, if it is, if it doesn't work and I have an error, then 
show the error, and then set a timeout in five, so in five seconds you execute the start method again, and we'll repeat the process. And when the connection, when the connection is closed, if the connection is closed for some reason, it's disconnected. We st we start, uh, we set the start cycle again, so we can reconnect whenever the server is available again. We trigger the start method so we can start our connection. And now this is the important part. You remember that on my hub, I have a method called message. This is the, the, the name of the method. If I should have created on my hub a method called a trigger writing or whatever, I should, I, I, I'm completely able to just take this method name and set it here and it will, it will automatically map that, uh, that method to the, to what's happening there. This is the on, so it, it, it happens here. Like when I send the message to sync, this is the event that it's received. So yeah, I can set any, any event I want. Uh, the connection invoke. It triggers the method on the on the hub, and the connection on expects the 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 event that it's happening. It will trigger this method whenever the server says that the trigger is writing. In this case, I had it for message because, of course, if I go back to my method, as you can see, I'm sending to every single client the message. So whenever I get this message on the client, I do something. I'm adding the message to the DOM, so it will be shown. Okay, now that the, we see that, let's see where I'm sending the message, like where I'm distributing the message to the server. As I mentioned before, like, okay, a message, I already have here my little implementation. I'm going to send an invoke. I'm going to do just this connection invoke. And it's not send message, it's message. And I send the message data. Okay. With that, I'm really creating our connection, making sure that it's connected, making sure that it reconnects if, it, if, if it's not available, making sure that I can receive my message and take the message data, which is completely serialized by SignalR. You can send any type of object and it will be ser serialized uh, both ways. And I will, I will receive my message data and I will add it to the DOM. Of course, I'm not, I don't need to show you how I just create an element and everything and blah, blah, blah. But yeah, I just add my information to the to the DOM. Uh, I also invoke um, uh, the message method and send the message data with a username, the username and the text on the send message method. That it just takes the the value of the input, creates an object, and send it to it to the server, so the server can distribute the message to everyone connected. Okay. So that's it. Let's check. Let's check out how it works and if it works. So if I say, if I just check this, let's see if I get connected here. I have the connect to server method that I need to add to my class. So this connect to server. And as you can see, because of, I have the login to show all the information, it's showing me that it's, com that it's connected to the server. It, it has its WebSocket connected and it's using the hub protocol as JSON. This is the default, you can change it if you want. But in this case, it's, it's perfect for me. So yeah, I'm using the hub protocol JSON and the signal is connected. This is the lock message that we got here on the connection loop that we have. So, okay, that means that I should be able to send message. As you can see, I sent the message and it's being displayed right here. It's happening uh, re really quick. So let's open a couple, uh, another tab. Let me just uh, maybe edge and send another loop. And as you can see, it's an R generated user and it's sending and it's sending messages and it's happening everything in completely real time. You can also do more stuff like overriding what happens when uh, someone connects to a server, when someone dis disconnects, you can uh, override those methods. You can like a uh, public, I think task on con on connection. 
async you can override this and yeah just return base on connected async and do your your logic i think it's there's no swayable method to override mm. i think replace with properly blah 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 let's check i think the hub has a an on connection on connected async let's check this on connected async which is a task oh, ah because of course it's an async task wow No, so we'll blah, 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 blah. on connection async. It's on connection async. This on connection async. Unconnected async. Sorry. So yeah, just by just like that, I can like just take my my method, do my stuff whenever a client is connected, or even if it's disconnected on disconnected async. Let's check because maybe I'm wrong. You know. On disconnected async, and you should be able to override this this logic. All the all all the logic of when a client connects, a client disconnects. In the in case you don't want to use a login implementation, but yeah, that's it. You can create any type of methods, and it doesn't matter what 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 the methods return here, because in this case we're not using that for for anything. But yes, there is a lot there is a lot of possibilities that you can manage with your clients. So. I hope this works for you and you can make some stuff with SignalR. It's perfect for real-time communications and it's really similar to some, if you have already worked with Socket.io, it has a really similar way of work. So yeah, I hope you can, with this, with this type of stuff, you can learn more and try to make your own implementations for real-time communications. So that's it for SignalR. That's the way you can implement SignalR in your application. Now you can have live stuff happening on your page that every client is synchronized and it's happening in real time. If you like this video, don't forget to press the like button, comment if you have an opinion or if you want to see something else, I want to hear you. And yeah, we have our videos that you can check. Don't forget to press subscribe also if you want to see the new things that we have every single week. And without anything else to say, happy day and happy coding.